En este tema vamos a estudiar In this lesson we study a very interesting problem, which is the problem of the compatibility of a linear system of equations. As we already know, a linear system of equations may have no solution, may have a unique solution, or may have infinite solutions. In fact we know that the general solution is a particular solution, which can be any, plus a linear subspace. Let's see how we pose the problem. Let's imagine that we have a complete system of equations, like the one in the transparency, and that we want to know what conditions have to meet the coefficients b1, b2, bn, so that the system has a solution, assuming that the coefficients are known. Once again, we have to transform this usual way of writing a system, in another way, that can be interpreted, so that we can use the concepts that we have handled with the orthogonality algorithm. So, let's do one thing, let's write the top system in a different but equivalent way. So, look at the bottom, it appears that x1 multiplies a vector that is a 1 1, a 2 1, a m1, x2, multiplies another vector, and xn, multiply another vector, and that linear combination of those vectors, with coefficients x1, x2, xn, is equal to the vector b1, b2, bm. We will see that this form is equivalent to the previous one. Look, what will be the first component of the vector of the term on the left, and the vector of the term on the right. The term on the right it is clear that the first component is b1, and what is the component of the vector on the left. It will be x1 by a 1 1, plus x2, by a 1 2, plus xn by a 1 n, or writing them in order, a 1 1 times x1, plus a 1 2, times x2, plus points, plus a 1n times xn, which is just what we have in the first equation above, and that's equal to b1, which is the first component of b. If we consider the second component of this equation below, it would be a 2 1 times x1, plus a 2 2, times x2, plus dots, plus a 2n times xn, which is just what we have in the second equation, equal to the second component which is b2, and the same with the last component. So, we can see that the traditional system or the traditional way to express a system of complete equations, can be written in another way, which is exactly the same system. Therefore, the top system will have solution if the down system has solution, and will not have it, if the down does not have it, but what is saying the system below? Well, very simple, it is telling us that the vector of the independent terms, b1, b2, bn, is a linear combination of the vector columns of the coefficients of the above matrix, and that the coefficients are x1, x2, xn. If the system solution exists, there also exist those coefficients and therefore the vector b1, b2, bn, the column vector on the right, belongs to the linear subspace generated by those column vectors, and if the system is not compatible, if that solution does not exist, that linear combination will not exist. Therefore, the important thing about these two ways of writing the system, is that it makes us very clear that the problem of system compatibility, can be reduced to a problem of membership. If the vector b1, b2, bn, belongs to the linear subspace generated by the vector columns of the coefficients, the system will be compatible, and if not, it will not be. I think it's a very important and interesting contribution, and quite surprising that, just to express the same thing in different ways, we can have a complementary view, such that it show us the way to solve a problem. So, to know if a system is compatible or not, just consider the column vectors of the coefficients, and what you have to see is if the vector of the independent terms belong to that subspace or not. When we analyzed the membership problem, 
we have seen that to see if a vector belongs to a subspace, what we have to do is to obtain the orthogonal subspace, and see if the vector is perpendicular to that subspace. If it is, it belongs, and if it does not, it does not belong. Let's see it with an example. Consider the system of equations that you have up there, which is a system of three equations, with three unknowns, where the independent terms are not numerical values, but functions of A and B, with which what we are asking is, what conditions should meet the values of A and B, so that this system has a solution, that is, make it compatible? So, what you have to do is to consider the column vectors and get the orthogonal subspace to the subspace generated by these vectors. Let's start with the first column. The first column corresponds to the coefficients of x1 in the three equations, which are 1 in the first, 1 in the second, and 0 in the third, that is, the vector is 1 1 0. We enter the vector 1 1 0, in the algorithm, in iteration 1, and what do we do? Well, we pivot as usual, and we get the matrix in iteration 2. Next, we consider the second column vector, which is obtained from the coefficients of x2 in all equations above. In the first, we have minus 1, in the second there is no x2, then it is 0, and in the third, the coefficient is 1, then the vector is minus 1 0 1, which is the one we enter in iteration 2, and we pivot, we get the transformed matrix of the iteration 3, and there we incorporate the third column vector, which is the vector that has by coefficients, those of x3, which are minus 1 1 2, and we pivot. We can see that, in this case, we were able to pivot twice, but in this last iteration, the scalar product of a3 and v3, is 0, then we cannot pivot, and therefore, what we do is to copy the same matrix in the final table. The conclusion is that the orthogonal subspace to the one generated by the column vectors of the system coefficients, results from eliminating vectors with which we have pivoted, that is to say, the vectors w1 and w2, and we keep v3. Then, the subspace orthogonal to the subspace generated by the column vectors of the coefficients is the subspace generated by the vector 1 minus 1 1. Then, if the independent terms vector, which is the vector a 3 ab when multiplied scalarly by this vector 1 minus 1 1, gives 0, it means that it is orthogonal to it, and therefore, the system would have a solution, it would be compatible. Otherwise, it would be incompatible. So we calculate the scalar product, as you have in the lower part, a times 1 is a, 3a times minus 1, is minus 3a, b times 1 is b, and we simplify that because a minus 3a, is minus 2a, and that's what has to be 0, but minus 2a, plus b equal to 0, is the same as b equal to 2a. So, if b equals 2a, the system is compatible, and if b is different from 2a, the system is incompatible. 